Myself, Dr. Jibran Amar presents to you Simply Pathology and today we are back with a very very important session. In today's topic of discussion, as you can see, we are mainly going to discuss about the WHO 5th edition salivary gland updates. Okay. Along with that, we are going to see the updated classification and along with that, we will also discuss the molecular pathogenesis. Okay. So, let us begin today's topic of discussion without wasting any time. Now, one very important thing that you have to understand is the fact that in today's lecture, we are going to cover around 4 to 5 important long answer question in the exam. Yes, so this lecture is very, very important. So, first and most importantly, in the recent advances, that is the paper number 4, you might be asked about the updates with regards to the salivary gland tumors, okay, according to the latest WHO 5th edition. So, this updates itself can come as a long answer question wherein you have to discuss the basic introduction, the classification, the new entities and the controversy surrounding. So, in short, you have to cover each and everything in short for a long answer question, okay, the update as a whole. Not only that, not only that, within the updates, okay, they can ask each of these subsections as a separate long answer question. For example, the latest WHO 5th edition salivary gland tumor classification can be asked as a separate long question or a separate long question can be asked on the new entities, okay or a separate long question can be asked uh, about all the controversies which are surrounding certain entities uh, associated with salivary gland neoplasm or certain salivary gland neoplasm. Okay? So, all these things they make up the updates. That is the first part of the lecture. The second part of the lecture is basically your molecular pathogenesis or molecular alterations in salivary gland neoplasm which is the hot favorite, which is a hot favorite for this year, hot favorite question for this year's examination that is your molecular pathogenesis or alterations in salivary gland neoplasm. So, without wasting any time, let us begin the first half that is the update. So, the first thing we will look at the introduction. So, remember one thing that the major and minor salivary gland they show a variety of neoplasm. Only very well documented new entities have been accepted in this edition. Now, the histological grading of salivary gland carcinoma has been shown to be an independent prognostic factor and carcinoma types for which a validated grading systems exist include adenoid cystic carcinoma, mucoepidermoid carcinoma and adenocarcinoma NOS. Now, all these grading systems have been discussed in details in the respective uh, sections okay, that we have already covered. So, we are not covering them over here. Over here, only the updates. Now, the number of entities in the salivary chapter has been reduced by omitting the tumors or lesions if they do not occur exclusively or predominantly in the salivary gland, including hemangioma, lipoma, nodular fasciitis, hematolymphoid tumor. So, these things have been removed completely from the salivary gland tumor. Only those tumors which are occurring predominantly or exclusively in the salivary gland, they have been kept. So, these other tumors which do not occur predominantly, they are now discussed elsewhere. Now, high grade transformation has been shown to be an important concept of tumor progression in salivary gland carcinoma. The importance of this phenomenon is that the tumors demonstrating high grade transformation show an aggressive clinical course that deviates significantly from the usual behavior for that particular tumor type. Okay. Now, let us go to the next heading under the update that is what are the new entities. Now, remember the new now among the new entities there are these are the new entities we will discuss them. But before that remember there was an entity which was non neoplastic in WHO uh, you know fourth edition that is sclerosing polycystic adenoma. Now, the neoplastic nature of sclerosing polycystic adenoma forced the reviewers or forced the WHO to move this particular lesion from non-neoplastic category into benign neoplasm category in the current WHO 5th edition. So, basically certain important molecular alteration has been discovered in the sclerosing polycystic adenoma that now it is no longer considered a non-neoplastic lesion rather it is now placed under the heading of benign neoplasms. Okay? So, it is not a new entity but it is now shifted to the benign group. Okay? The status has changed. It is now under the heading of benign neoplasm. Now, what are the new entities? New entities are either malignant group of entities or benign group of entities. Now, under the malignant entities, you are having microsecretory adenocarcinoma and you have sclerosing microcystic adenocarcinoma. Whereas, under the new benign entities, we are having keratocystoma, 
intercalated duct adenoma and striated duct adenoma. Now remember, whenever the question is coming to discuss all the updates as a whole, so you cannot describe all the malignant and the new benign entities in details, but at least you are supposed to write one or two line about these entities which I have discussed later on. So when you read through this entire lecture, if in the exams you are just asked about the updates, so when you enumerate all these malignant entities, just write two lines each for each of these new entities. Okay. Next thing, molecular testing of salivary gland tumors for differential diagnostic accuracy and appropriate clinical management has become a routine in many high income countries. The most common molecular alterations were included in the definition of following entities that is mucoepidermal carcinoma, adenoid cystic carcinoma, secretory carcinoma, polymorphous adenocarcinoma, halenizing clear cell carcinoma, mucinous adenocarcinoma and microsecretory adenocarcinoma. Now, the details of the molecular alterations will be discussed in the second half of the lecture. Okay. So, right now we are just enumerating some important points and important tumors for which routine molecular testing is done. Now comes the WHO fifth edition classification, which can itself come as a LAQ in the exam. Now, what I have done is I have discussed all the important headings according to the latest WHO fifth edition and whatever new entities have been added, I have just highlighted them in red. Now, first we will see the benign epithelial tumors which includes pleomorphic adenoma, Warthens tumor, oncocytoma, salivary gland myoepithelioma, sebaceous adenoma, basal cell adenoma, ductal papillomas and you are having certain new entities like keratocystoma, striated duct adenoma, intercollected duct adenoma and hyperplasia and also very importantly this entity which was considered non-neoplastic in the previous edition in the current edition they are regarded as a neoplastic benign entity called as sclerosing polycystic adenoma then we are having canalicular adenoma lymphadenoma cyst adenoma of the salivary glands saladenoma papilliferum the next group comes the malignant epithelial group of tumor. So, what are the entities? Mucoepidermal carcinoma, adenoid cystic carcinoma, acinic cell carcinoma, secretory carcinoma, polymorphous adenocarcinoma, micro secretory adenocarcinoma which is a new entity, halinizing clear cell carcinoma, basal cell adenocarcinoma, intraductal carcinoma, salivary duct carcinoma, myoepithelial carcinoma, epithelial myoepithelial carcinoma, mucinous adenocarcinoma, clearosing microcystic adenocarcinoma, carcinoma, ex pleomorphic adenoma, carcinosarcoma of the salivary gland, sebaceous adenocarcinoma, lymphoepithelial carcinoma, squamous cell carcinoma, tyloblastoma, salivary gland carcinoma, NOS. Now, these are the two important headings. Other headings include mesenchymal tumors specific to the salivary gland include sialolipoma only because they are specifically occurring in the salivary gland. Other tumors are, are there but they are not specific for the salivary gland. Non-neoplastic epithelial lesions include nodular oncocytic hyperplasia and lymphoepithelial saladenitis. Okay. So, with this we have completed a discussion of salivary gland neoplasm classification. The third important thing, first we will see the controversies in short. We will see the basic short controversies and this can be asked as a separate long answer question which will be discussed. Okay. So, the fo following controversial issues remain. The first and most important is with regards to IPMN which is nothing but intraductal papillary mucinous neoplasm similar to what we see in the pancreas. So, what are the controversies or what are the questions which revolves around IPMN? So, the most important question is that are IPMN and mucinous adenocarcinoma related? Are they part of a single spectrum? Is IPMN regarded as a precursor or a pre-neoplastic condition to mucinous adenocarcinoma? Is IPMN related to duct papilloma? So, further workup and clarification are needed to address this question and such questions cannot be answered by the current WHO 5th edition. Now, remember you must be thinking what is IPMN? IPMN, it is an emerging entity comprising duct centric tumors, tumors or there is a proliferation of ductal cells within the confines of the duct, okay, with a low grade mucinous morphology. It shares with mucinous adenocarcinoma frequent AKT1 mutation. So, this mutation which is present in mucinous adenocarcinoma is also seen in IPMN. It is still not established whether IPMN should be classified as a separate entity altogether or it should be regarded as a variant of mucinous adenocarcinoma or as a potential precursor of mucinous adenocarcinoma. So, these questions have not been answered. So, basically it is now regarded, IPMN is regarded as an emerging entity. Okay, Its position inside the classification system is not very clear. Now, for the other entity that is 
इंट्राडक्टल कार्सोनोमा नो रिमेम्बर इंट्राडक्टल कार्सोनोमा इज वेरी मच सिमिलर टू द डक्टल कार्सोनोमा इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ द ब्रेस्ट और लाइक द डीसीआईएस बट देर इज अ इंपॉर्टेंट प्रॉब्लम इन रिलेशन टू द इंट्राडक्टल कार्सोनोमा ऑफ द सलिवरी ग्लैंड व्हाट इज इट क्लैरिफिकेशन इज नीडेड रिगार्डिंग इंट्राडक्टल कार्सोनोमा दैट हाउ टू क्लासिफाई द ट्यूमर इन केस द ट्यूमर इज इन्वॉल्वड एंड शोइंग इनवेजन बिकॉज़ सी बाय डेफिनेशन एनी इंट्राडक्टल कार्सोनोमा दे आर इन सिटू बट व्हाट इज हैपनिंग दैट in certain areas okay certain data is showing that the myoepithelial cells of intraductal carcinoma okay they seem to be part of the tumor therefore these cases may be biphasic neoplasm rather than truly in situ means what they are saying that intraductal carcinoma though for most part they are in situ but in certain cases they are also shown to they are also known to show invasion okay and also there is one theory that these ductal cells they are carrying certain molecular alteration and those molecular alteration sometimes are also present in the myoepithelial cells so when these myoepithelial cells are also containing those molecular alteration that means what that means that this myoepithelial cell layer is also part of the tumor okay and it is not a benign uh, entity which is surrounding so as a result this might be an in situ neoplasm associated with invasion so it is a biphasic neoplasm so there is no clarity regarding this in details we will discuss un under the controversy section again there is no consensus about the existence of oncocytic carcinoma oncocytic car uh, appearance is a common change encountered in many different salivary gland tumors in past the carcinomas consisting entirely of oncocytes were frequently diagnosed as oncocytic carcinoma but after all these uh, next generation sequencing fish and all these molecular testing came into existence it was seen that many of such tumors which were previously labeled as oncocytic carcinoma they turned out to be oncocytic variants of other salivary carcinomas rather than being a true oncocytic carcinoma therefore it is unclear whether oncocytic carcinoma exist as a independent entity for this reason it has been included under the section of emerging entities section okay so these are the major important controversies which is existing so carcinosarcoma now, what, what are some of the other updates carcinosarcoma has remained a separate entity in this edition but it is not clear whether the sarcomatous component represents a true sarcoma or a result of epithelial mesenchymal transition one important other controversy is with regards to casg which is cribriform adenocarcinoma of salivary gland origin casg it now represents a distinctive subtype of polymorphous adenocarcinoma now remember polymorphous adenocarcinoma is defined as a clinically histologically and molecularly heterogeneous disease group whether casg is a different diagnostic category or a variant of polymorphous adenocarcinoma it is quite controversial and in details we will discuss late later okay this is in short again poorly differentiated carcinoma and oncocytic carcinomas are discussed in the category of salivary carcinoma nos and emerging entities as i have already explained previously so with this we have discussed the updates in short so suppose you are only asked about the updates just write down till here with the only change as i told you that you please Uh, include one or two lines regarding the new entities okay this is what you have to add in the update section this one laq is answered the next important long answer question is they will just give you discuss new entities according to the who fifth edition of salivary gland tumors okay so what are the new entities individual new entities we will discuss in short and very fast along with the differential diagnosis so first thing is clearing polycystic adenoma as a